Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in to another how-to episode of Fish on Long Island. In this video today, I'm going to show you guys how to put together a fluke ball with a tail and hook, trail and hook, excuse me. There's many types of uh, heads you could use. Like you see, this one's a painted with the big eyes on it, with the swivel. It's important, you definitely want them with the swivel on it. Here's your standard chrome, again, with the swivel. It's important you want that. Okay, so let's get to it. So basically, I'm going to start with this head right here. This looks to be about a three ounce uh, ball head right here. So for starters, we got a Snell hook. For this rig, I'm going to go with a 6.0 or 7.0 Gamagatsu octopus style hook. I'm going to just open it up. Be careful because these hooks are extremely sharp right out of the package. So you definitely don't want to be messing around with that. And there's your hook. All right. So like I said, for this rig, we're going to be using a 7 or I'm sorry, this is a 6 -0. This is a 6 Gamagatsu octopus style hook. And we're going to be using 60 pound monofilament. So for starters, you want to run the line through the eye of the hook. And you want to give yourself some room to make your loop. So it's basically looks something like that. Okay. I like to give myself a little playroom when I start doing the twist. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take the line from the back closest to the eye and start wrapping them around the hooks. There's one. Every time you, I wrap the eye, I'm sorry, every time I wrap the shank and hook, you'll see that I twist the line. There's two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's basically what it looks like right now. I'm gonna hold on to that. So it's like this now, and I'm gonna pull tight. And of course, you can always moisten the line a little, a little saliva or whatever, just so it doesn't burn and goes through. So now I still have that knot in my hand, I'm going to take that tag in and just snug it down just a little bit, not fully. Okay, and now I'm going to slide that up to the eye so it looks something like that. Okay, now we have to tighten the whole knot. So simply you grab the main line, the tag in, and just pull down. And that's it. She's snug. Now you have this tag line here. You're going to take that and just trim it. You don't need that. And that's, it. So that's basically what you start on one right there. Now that I have my hook tied, I'm going to cut the length I need. Now if I was doing a double hook rig, I would have to tie one more on here before I cut anything to make sure where I wanted it, you know, where the placement of the hook would be. Say like for using giant squids, Peruvian spearing, and I want these, or even like giant fillets of mackerel or bunker, then I would put a second hook probably in that area right there. But this is just going to be a single hook rig, so I'm going to basically trim it a little bit and start to decide where I'm going to put all my gear and what I am going to put on the rig itself. So for that, I'll just cut right here. We can take that extra line and just put it to the side. So now I have a short piece of leader like this. For this one, you could either go with a Mylar teaser. You can just go with some funky stuff you find at the shows. I don't even know what this thing is called, but it's got a lot of shine. It looks nice. Stand a little pink rubber squids. Or what I'm going to use on this rig is just a little like hydro squid. And it's got some Mylar tape in it to give it some real nice shine. But I'm also going to add a few beads because I want the hook placement. So you're going to add some beads to that. Okay. So with that being said, I have some nice red colored beads here. And I'll just start sliding them down a hook. I think I'm probably going to go with four for this. Three or four. Let's see how it looks. I'm just sliding them down a hook. Sorry, I was off camera. So that's three right now. I'm probably going to leave it at three. And you can see that. All right, then you can also do a measurement up on a squid where you think that's gonna lay, and that, that's looking fairly good. You know what, let's go with the fourth. Here's the fourth bead going on. Of course, the fourth one's gotta be the one to give me a problem. So, there we go. There's your four beads on there. And you could add other stuff if you want. You could put glow beads. I'm going with small beads because it's foil. I don't want it to crumble up inside this bait right here. So now what we do, I'm going to flip this upside down. And I'm going to put the line through. Okay. So it starts going through. Now these rubber legs are all going to want to stick to that monofilament. So you kind of just like got to slowly feed it in and make sure you don't take a leg with you. Like I'm doing now. And you can see one leg actually is already in there. All right. So now I just put that all through. Did a little bit off camera. You can see the gist of what I was doing. There's four beads in there now. I'm not sure if you could see that. Let me put that on the hand. 
So there's the four beads in there and stops it and there's my hook placement right there. All right. Now, if you want to add anything on the outside, you could. On this rig, I'm not. I'm going to leave it just as it is. No flashes, no little flashing spoons or anything like that or any other beads. Strictly going to be just this. So now I come to my ball head right there, and I'm going to tie. Now, you could do this many ways. Some people might crimp it. I tie knots, and you basically want to pick the length that you want. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. So you could eye it up how far you want it to be from the jig. Be a little closer if you want, whatever. So you can see how far I'm going. It's probably about eight inches, I guess. I'm gonna tie that into it. So with that, you can just do a standard, whatever knot you like, actually. I'll just do a clinch knot. And I'm just spinning that around like five or six times. You always wanna wet it. Once you wet it, come back through the loop where you made it. Right like that and just basically pull down, wet it again. <clears throat> okay, so you can see how I pull down on that. Snug it up. And you always wanna pull down on your tag ends too and tighten them, make sure they're locked in good. So that's done, all right. So you can see there's the knot right there. There's the ball. Again, when you tag in, you're gonna cut it. Turn it off. And there's your rig right there. That actually went a little further because when you slide down, the line does slide. I forgot to mention that. So you can see your rig. So that's basically what your rig's looking like now. You have the ball right there coming down to your squid. Now, if you want to add to that, you could take another piece of model come up a few inches, um, a few inches, probably about a foot, foot and a half, and then you could tie another rig up top and have a trail, and that's usually what they call the Montauk rig, and you could have a second hook off your leader, either with a three-way or a loop knot and a swivel, and then have a second rig going back like four feet, three, four feet onto your leader to have a double hook rig, you can make that, or you could just fish this just like this, and it's very simple. With this, you could either put a gulp, but if you are putting a gulp, what I would do, I would definitely go with the uh, bait holders, these are 5 old bait holders by Gamagatsu, Gamagatsu hooks. Uh, you can see they have these little barbs on the hooks, so they're going to hold the bait on a little better for the gulp and stuff. You know, any little thing to help you, of course, in your favor, you're going to use it. And these definitely will help hold the bait a little bit better than just a straight hook. If you're doing bait, your simple octopus hooks are fine. From here, you could put on a squid strip, spearing, Peruvian spearing, fluke belly, whatever it is that you like to use. Sea robin bellies, uh, dogfish bellies works really well pop that right on there and basically you can work on the bottom and you know radically just keep balancing balancing lifting and letting this little jig do all the work and have all that flashing from the mylar tape going and that's a simple way to make a fluke ball rig a lot of these standard ones that you come with you know they come out of the package it looks something like this with a straight hook you know there's really not much in that it's, it's that's it you know i like to have that little extra line you know, not saying these work great too, don't get me wrong, these work perfectly fine. I just like to add some mono to it to have it go a little further back. And that's basically a simple way to do it. And again, like I said, you could add any teaser you want, pick and choose whatever you want. You could add any beads you want. As you can see, this box I have right here has all different sorts of beads. There's glow beads, holographic beads, colored beads, everything you need to make your fluke rigs. All right, that's it. Uh, guys, thank you for watching the video. I really appreciate everything. I appreciate the comments. I get back to you as fast as I can. Usually within 24 hours, I will answer any comment. Any comments you might have on any rig it is, I can answer for you, or any question about fishing in general. Uh, if you like these videos, please, it helps me out if you like the videos, if you subscribe to the videos, and also comments help with the algorithm to help these videos come more into the foregrounds. I appreciate everything. Thank you, guys, and get out there and get fishing.